Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Southern Fried Tech. Now this week I just have a quick uh, little update video for you guys. Had a, I bet I've had a really busy week. Uh, a lot of stuff going on at work, a lot of stuff going on at home. But I got extremely lucky and twice this week I found some sweet to me laptops I should say. Uh, I'm going to start off, I haven't really done too, I've looked too much into these things. Uh, I just picked them up, I've tried to turn them on, made sure they work and whatnot. And uh, But you know, I'll go down the list and, see, and let you guys know what works, what doesn't work. Uh, I'm going to start off here with this IBM A22M. Uh, again, I'm not really too familiar with IBM laptops, personally. More of an HP guy, Dell, that kind of stuff. Uh, but I've always been intrigued by the IBMs, and I've never really found one locally. I kind of prefer to buy local versus online. Um, fortunate enough to find these on Craigslist. You got a really good price. Uh, actually, I got two. I'll get to the other one in a second. But, uh, yeah, I mean, they're really awesome. Love these keyboards. Love the little pointing knob bat over here. Although, I will admit, it's a little, it's a little weird to get used to it, but... Once you get used to it, it's, you know, it's pretty cool. Can't, I obviously prefer an external mouse, but on the go, it's pretty sweet. Um, yeah, anyway, let's take a quick look. You know, so we have our little keyboard, a little touchpad. I'm not really sure what this is for. Um, yeah, I've only gotten to the point where I've added some drivers to this thing. I think it's missing some driver for this, but I haven't been able to... If it's like, like a middle button or something, I haven't been able to get it to work. So, you know, still got some playing around what to do with this thing. But anyway, let's take a look, look, look here on the side. If I can even get it from the charger. Sorry. And here on the side, I have some audio ports. I have a floppy disk. Uh, at this point, I don't know if it works. Look, infrared port right here. Uh, neither one of these had hard drives. Luckily enough, I had I did have that spare hard drive from my Compact Evo. Um, this actually had Windows 7 on it. eBay seller said that it was brand that it was empty, it was clean, and that wasn't true. So that took a little while to wipe this, install Windows XP, which this originally came with, and it does have the. Uh, Certificate of Authenticity on the bottom. Um, read on the front, we don't have anything. We have the little slots where you click the screen. And that, it's, what's pretty nice on these old laptops versus nowadays where they just flip open, you, you still have the physical latches. So let me show you. Right. Got these two right here. So you know your laptop's, you, you know your laptop's locked up. It's, that's so nice, man. Over here on the right side, we have a, an, uh, I believe it's a, yeah, it's a PS2 port or DVD reader. Uh, this one actually came in with, uh, came to me with the CDRW uh, reader, but unfortunately I wasn't able to get it to work at least before uh, filming this. So I would hit the button, the light would come on, and it would start making a weird buzzing sound. So I'm not really sure if something's just stuck in there or whatnot, but... You know, I, I don't mind. It's just, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But at least I have a D DVD drive in here, so that's pretty cool. And two little uh, PC MCI card slots right here for, like, your modem, your wireless card, whatnot. Uh, on the back, you know, you tilt the camera up here a little bit. We have our nice little IBM ThinkPad logo again, the tricolor logo. Uh, at the bottom, we have Parallel. Our telephone modem and Ethernet port, fan vent, uh, serial port, VGA and a USB 1.0. Oh, I'm just, I'm sorry. This this is S video, and then this is gonna be your uh, PS2 port uh, and a charger port. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a charger for these, but luckily I, I was getting I got it to work with a I believe it's a 19 volt compact charger. Uh, as far as I can tell, at least on this system, the battery's not working. It's not holding a charge. You can tell right here in the corner, you can see the light just keeps on blinking. Uh, every once in a while, it'll stop blinking, but as soon as you unplug it, it dies off. So, let's turn this on. It's got a couple of neat little features, but uh, I gotta turn it on for that. Let's see. Let's 
go in the BIOS. Oh, I missed it. As far as I can tell, like just the basic like basic features, so my keyboard, speakers, that kind of stuff works. Uh, the LCD does have a bit of a like a pressure mark around here. You can't really see it until the blue wallpaper comes up, but I mean it's it's all fine and dandy. Uh, this is running 512 megs of RAM. It's running a one gigahertz Pentium three processor. Okay, there you go, right, yeah, right there. Uh, and again, the aforementioned 40 gig uh, hard drive. But yeah, I mean, uh, you heard the boot chime in here. Um, let's see if we can get some system information here. Oh, this is fun. This is a fun pointing up to use when behind the camera. But yeah, there we go. It's running Windows XP Service Pack 3, which is what uh, uh, the code worked for. Um, let's see. Let's see if we have any driver issues real quick. So we do have this unknown device, and again, I haven't really gotten too far into it to figure out what what drivers aren't working. I just want to give you guys a quick preview. Let's see. And unfortunately, I couldn't get this to work on the uh, the compact, but I can on here. And have that nice Windows XP install music. I'm not sure if the camera's gonna pick it up, but let's see. Oh, and that's a cool feature too on here. Like right off the bat, without even installing drivers, my uh, hotkeys worked. Let me turn that down a bit. Um, uh, one of those is gonna be the brightness, which works in BIOS, and I wish I could have showed you that. Uh, one cool feature I found on this laptop, which is so sweet to me. Let me turn that down. It's this little light. So if you hit the function key and your page up, you can see this little light and it, it won't show up on camera but see back then you didn't really have a backlit keyboard you know like nowadays it's such a common feature so this is actually turned on and it's not that bright it's pretty dim compared to like you know a fully backlit keyboard but it, it does its job it gives you a nice sort of clear view um but again un unfortunately i can't show you i'm working on getting a better camera and Hopefully it should be able to pick it up. But I, I tested it before this and yeah, you just see the little blue speck over there. But yeah, this is the uh, IBM ThinkPad A2N2M. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna just uh, test it in a couple weeks, make a cool little video about it. Should give you guys a more in-depth review. Um, as far as I can tell, this was released early 2000s. Because again, this was released with Windows XP. Um, I, I've tried a couple of games on here couple of pop cap games just to see if it's fine let me load up suma deluxe over here Adding event seeker whoops you... sorry about that jump cut there uh bixby over here decided to uh start asking me permissions for something uh, i'm not really sure all right let's see do a little suma deluxe over here um i do have this game on cd but unfortunately the game is scratched so i only have the trial here but i mean we can still we can still check this out for gaming Let's see if I can even get this to go. Let's see how to play this with the pointing knob. Actually, I tried this out with the external. I haven't tried this on the knob, so this will be a first for me. Oh, God, this low. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is this is horrible. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Ah. This is such a f one of my favorite games, and honestly, this is—I'll uh, be honest. This is how, um, how I, you know, no joke, got into PC gaming. It started off with these kinds of games. Man, I'm not gonna lie. If I could, I I, I sit here and play this for hours, but. I gotta move on to the next one. So, sorry Mr. Suma Deluxe. Yeah, I just wanna give you guys a quick little look at that. You know, at least for basic games, basic stuff like this, it works. Uh, I don't really have anything installed on here at the moment. Uh, I just wanted to, again, test it. 
Um, and I would have spent the day it's him, the game. Ah, sorry, I would have spent the day testing this furthermore, a lot more. But uh, I had to pick up a really sweet laptop. Then I'm gonna leave that to the end. So let's go and shut this off real quick and move on to the next. All right, welcome back. Uh, now we're moving on to the uh, ThinkPad A31. So I got these two as a bundle. Um, this one's pretty. This one's a bit older. This was released with Windows 98. You still have the cool little blue inner tab. You still have your little pointing nub. IBM little features. Have uh, the function keys here on the side. Uh, unfortunately, this one I have not been able to get to work. Still look cool looking laptop, but uh, I'm not at this point. I'm not sure if it's the charger I'm using. Again, it's a technically not the authentic IBM charger. It's a compact thing, but. I mean, just aesthetic-wise, it's it's still a cool little collector's piece. Uh, if I can get this working, cool. You know, uh, I would love all the IBM knowledge I can get out of these things if it works. But it, if it doesn't work, I, I'm happy with the other one. But, I mean, we can still take a quick look at this. So, here, this one's a little bit different on the side here. Um, the CD-ROM would have been on the left. or I'm, so, I'm sorry, this would have been a... Uh, from my understanding, a um, floppy di floppy drive or another CD drive, or I believe another hard drive slot. Um, this is basically multi multi purpose slot, so you could have a couple of different things. Uh, you still do have your audio ports here on um, they're colored labeled. You have your little infrared reader. Let's move on to the front. Uh, over here, this big massive chunk over here. This would have been the battery. This did not, also did not come with a battery. The other one did. Uh, oh, yeah, I mentioned it didn't work. Um, over here on the right side, uh, we have our little, have a little empty blank here for the for the optical drive. And our hard drive slot and PCM CIA. Um, actually, to take these out, it's, it's kind of cool. So I'm going to put this defective drive in here, right? That's so. So it's in there, right? And you have this little latch right here that pops out. Come on. Okay, there you go. Uh, I'm just, I thought you did it the other way. But anyway, yeah, you have to pull this out before this comes out. And once that comes out, you're good to go. So it's like, you know, it's not going to come out of there. It's pretty secured. Over here on the back, we have our serial port. This, from my understanding, is actually a capture capture port uh, unfortunately this one doesn't have so it, it doesn't have it so it's not something we can play with but it, that would have been kind of cool and you know on top of that it might not work uh if this system ends up being dead and maybe it's a uh, it's a motherboard issue or whatnot uh, i'll do some research and i'll see if we can get a motherboard that has it and if so that should that should be pretty cool I, i've never never had a laptop where it's had an input and Sorry, a capture port. I I'm sure they're out there. Uh, personally, I've never had them, but you know, it'd be it'd be it would be something nice that I would like to uh, to try out with. Um, you have your Ethernet and and telephone port right here. Your VGA and parallel. Your two USB this time, and charger port. Um, uh, from what I've read online, the same charger that works for this should work for that. And I'm assuming voltage wise, it should be the same thing, but you never really know with like different manufacturers or different you know internals it, it might be more specific so like i for example i've had motorola phones where they would only take a charge with a motorola branded charger or cable versus like my samsung phones have worked with you know whatever i've plugged into them i it's just kind of hit or miss with this kind of stuff um it does have a couple of scratches here in the back you know but be able to clean that off you know pay a little scrubbing or whatnot and again a little colorful ibm logo back here you know nice simple professional design that's what's really cool about these things like yeah you can use them at home but they just look so professional they just look so nice you know like growing up i would see like i would see these in like offices and like you know professionals using these and they would be so like i would love them but it wasn't something I'd see at the store. I'd go into like the Circuit City and whatnot, and you know I'd see compacts, HPs, that kind of stuff. Uh, this one also does have the little light. 
uh, I believe it's up here uh, you know to give you the uh, backlit keyboard but you know what if we can't get it to work then you know um, that's a shame but if, if we can it'd be pretty sweet and now uh, let me show you the the third laptop which I bought in you could say I'm saving the best for last so with a little movie magic should be right now welcome back yes if you're not if you're familiar with this you know how excited I am if you're not familiar with this get ready because I I, I, I was trying to hide my excitement all day with this thing this is a Panasonic tough book so if you're not familiar with what a tough book is this thing is basically built to military grade standards so you can basically use this out in the rain you can drop it from I believe three feet and it's designed to be shockproof it's designed to take designed to take all the abuse in fact I was reading a story from a soldier in the army who got shot and one of these things actually stopped the bullet it's massive <laughs> It's got a built-in handle here on the front. You know, you carry this thing around like a briefcase. Everything, everything on here is covered. You have this massive industrial looking power switch on the front. Over here on the side, if I recall correctly, this is where the hard drive is covered in. And it's in like this chunky case looking thing. And I haven't opened it because I'm afraid to break it, but it, apparently it's like covered up in foam. It's, it's a regular uh, Toshiba id hard disk which is pretty common for the time um just to open like let me show you how to open it so we can open that tab it's, this isn't you know you don't flip this up or you don't have those little two tabs like the ibms do have uh, you actually have this heavy duty metal latch right here which is kind of tricky to open yeah, once you once you get used to it I, I would assume it's not that bad but i literally only had this for a day and i, I still can't get used to it but supposed to push down right here and like pull up just look at this thing man oh my god it's just amazing but anyway yeah i believe this is where you open it right here yeah there we go so you have your hard drive cup right there and you can see all these gaskets right here and that's where the waterproofing thing is um i'm gonna test this system so you know keep uh you know subscribe or uh, you know put me in like uh, notices or whatnot um i'm gonna test this like the ruggedness of this system because i saw a commercial for this when i was a kid growing up and i fell in love unfortunately that love isn't cheap these things uh i believe this uh this system was about two or three thousand dollars when it was brand new and that's the thing too it, it wasn't designed you know these weren't really sold as a general public type thing so these were being sold to like the military you know construction companies uh i've seen ads where um you have like mobile mechanics selling these things because again they're pretty industrious they can take a beating uh over here we have our sd card reader and our uh, pcim cia right here so again for your modem wi-fi cards and whatnot again heavy duty gasket you know at least well this isn't even a yeah it, it's a gasket that's sealed for your protection uh over here if i can get this open actually i'm not going to open that because it's starting to uh, crack but this is your telephone port and your ethernet port one really deep usb and your charger port um this should have another another uh, cover port but uh, i believe it broke at some point or maybe somebody ripped it off so unfortunately I, I can't get this wet until I replace those but I, I've seen them go pretty cheap on eBay I just haven't gotten around to ordering one ordering a new set because boy am I uh, am I excited to try this thing this isn't a big click uh, over here on the back so basically you have one giant door here and a little sliding door for I believe it's your dock yes your dock so you know you get back to the office you need to you want to set this up to your main system because as cool as it is that uh, uh you know the keyboard and the touchpad have their drawbacks but we'll, we'll go we'll get into that in a second um just to give you guys like i said a quick quick little look at this thing because uh, honestly i i know a thing or two about them 
you know, but I don't know anything. Like, just in general, this is such a whole new, uh, like, uh, experience for me. Um, back here we have uh, another USB, which I believe these are USB 2.0. Uh, don't quote me on that. Our audio ports. I'm not really sure what that thing. I think it kind of looks like an antenna. An antenna slot, but I'm not really sure. Uh, VGA port. Parallel port. And over here on its own. I believe it's a serial port. If I can get it open. Yeah, there we go. Serial port. So, you know, these are industrial machines. So, you know, you have a lot of... You still have a lot of, like, serial connectors. Serial... Tele telecommunication devices and whatnot so it's still something you see around um actually as a daily thing i work in computers and like industrial computers and yeah man they, they have plenty of serial ports still which is not really something you see in a home computer but you know they they, they know what they're doing uh over here we have our multi-purpose slot so same as the aibm this could be swapped one of the original configurations for this system did come with a floppy disk. Thankfully, this one has a DVD-ROM. Um, not sure if it works yet. It's something I need to try out. Um, back here, we have our battery release tab. If I can remember how to open it. And, yeah, okay, there we go. So, this is weird. So, normal locking position, right? You don't move it, but when you got to open this thing, it's kind of a... kind of have to move it, then you pull it down... And only then it opens up. And you have the battery here. Uh, I've charged this up. And, you know, I, I don't know if this is the original battery or not. I've charged this up. And the Windows timer actually says that my batteries get up to six hours. Um, I live in I live in Texas. And, you know, if you're from Texas or you know of Texas, you know it gets really hot down here. So I left this in my car at work today. And, uh... To see if it would the heat would do anything to the battery. Nothing. I got home. It was still, I think, at believe at 98%. Uh, and that's actually one of the cool things with these things. Uh, from my understanding, there's no fan. It's built in to cool down on its... Uh, to cool down on... Be passively cooled. Um, again, it you know, you don't want a fan vent on this thing if you spill it on water. But actually, when you go into the BIOS, which we'll go in a set... We'll do right now... It'll actually figure out on its own if it's in a hot weather temp, uh, environment or it should slow down or, you know, if it's active, or if you need to set it up on its own. So here we have a nice, nice view of the inside of the unit. Uh, unfortunately, the, this one does not come with a touchscreen, but a touchscreen is available. Um, it all You could also get a backlit keyboard and a rub, uh, rubberized keyboard, which does not have... Um, it does look like it's more of a, like a base model. Uh, weird thing with this pan, with the Panasonic Toughbooks, and I'm, I'm sure with all their tough line is, uh, when you're looking at the model number, so for example, this is a CF29, uh, on the bottom of the system, there's like, uh, I believe it's a nine digit model number, and you have to go through all that if you want to figure it out. So, uh, let me turn it on. I actually had to, I made a Word document on here because I, I couldn't remember. I, there's no way I was going to remember how this system worked. But to turn it on, you know, we hold down this little tab here for about two seconds. And just look at this thing. We're going to go into BIOS and I'll show you real quick what I mean. So, you know, main system over here. We have the uh, Intel Pentium Centrino 1.6 uh, gigahertz processor, 1.2 gigs of RAM, the uh, 60 gig hard drive, Toshiba IDE, if I believe. Uh, it's been uh, it's been running for 2,000 hours. So, guy I bought this from, he said he had it work for I'm assuming you know 40 week hour, probably not for too long. But we can go here, yeah, and under the main. So down here under environment. Uh, it'll it'll figure out how, what it needs to do. So like it tells us um, how it'll change up the battery if it's in high temperature, if it's connected for too long, or just let the system figure it out. So when I got home today, I turned it back on. It was still said normal temperature. Physically, it was pretty hot, you know, but I'll let it do its thing. So let's get out of BIOS here. Without and let's get into Windows. 
Um, so when I was talking about the dock thing, this is basically why this touchpad is small and it's not the best, like, it's really not the uh, best touchpad out there. It, I actually had to set the setting to speed to fast so it would run normal. Keyboard, it's pretty small, it's pretty cramped. This is a 13 inch screen. It's uh, it's not bad to type on. I mean, it's got a good feel to it, but it's you know you don't really want to do this all day. If you have the option to set up an external keyboard or external mouse, then definitely want to definitely want to do that. So like you can see, you know, it, it's pretty spotty at best. So let's go ahead and log in over here. There we go. Let's have Webroot. Uh, this is actually the install that came when I bought it. Uh, I haven't I haven't really messed with it just because um, it, when I bought it, it was missing a few drivers. And just to find drivers for this thing, it's, it's pretty weird. Um, Panasonic has a North America website and a Jap uh, Japanese website for their service. And... I went, I tried going to the North American and just, for example, just a video driver. There's like 10. I, I tried a few and every single one that I tried uh, kept telling me, hey, your computer is not compatible. So I had to go through the Japanese w website, which is clearly laid out, specifically asked you for what specific um, CF29 model this was, if, what language, what uh, operating system worked wonders. But yeah, let's take a quick look at this thing. Gonna go over here in the properties. Let's see. Um, same as the IBM uh, Windows XP Service Pack 3. Uh, it's again the uh, 1.6 gigahertz of Pentium, uh, 1.24 gigs of RAM. Uh, my understanding when this thing was new, it came with 256. It was optioned with the floppy disk drive and. Uh, Mm, hold on. All right, jump cut. Sorry, I was trying to find the document, but apparently I never saved it on here. So this is what I'm saying. I, um, I had to, I, I had to go on, uh, on Google to figure out what each letter on that serial number, part number meant. And yeah, here we go. So originally, this laptop as it came out. So again, the same Intel Centrino uh, CPU, the 1.66. 1.6 gigahertz so that's the same the 13.3 xga uh, lcd no touchscreen no rubberized keyboard no backlit just this was the only option the 60 gig hard drive and 256 megabytes of ram which again has been upgraded to 1.2 gigs uh floppy disk drive which cool you know it got upgraded the dvd um, and the as far as uh, connectivity, the only option was the Ethernet port. Uh, you could also get the uh, Bluetooth card, if I'm correct. You know, if memory serves me right. Um, as far as W, uh, as far as as far as wireless WAN and GPS goes, um, this is not available on the system. So you know, you you could get this right out of the factory with like a, I believe it's a Verizon. Maybe AT and T chip already on here, so you know you would have wireless internet, wireless service wherever you were. So again, this is mainly pushed for you know service technicians and whatnot. Um, but you know you kind of need that kind of stuff out in the field. Uh, original operating system was Windows XP Pro Professional Service Pack Two, upgraded to Service Pack Three, and country of sale North America. So you know, that's all pretty good and dandy. Um, how is it like just in the past 24 hours of using it um it's been pretty great uh it uh, the previous owner installed chrome on here so i mean you can still go online you can still it's it's a little slow uh but i mean i got it hooked up to my home wi-fi right now yeah i've been using chrome for the past couple of hours you know to play with this thing um unfortunately you know can't really do youtube on here as much so let's go to youtube here it's pretty slow. Um, if it ever opens up. And oh my god, it's just so awesome to use this thing. It's it's so great. Like I said, I've wanted one for years. 
never thought I'd own one, and when I saw it, you know, it was just oh, so great. Let's see. I'm going to go to my channel because, I, again, I'm going to see myself. And it's a shame that this keyboard is so small. I just, you know, it's not bad to type on it. It's pretty good. Let's see. I'm going to run this Vista here. That's, you know, you can tell it's pretty no, laggy. No, oh, got my hopes up there, excited. I had a touch screen. Um, I, I don't know how the sound is going to come off on camera, but in real life, it's, it, it's pretty muffled. Let me see if I can turn it up all the way. And you start seeing these little labels right here. You know, the sign for Windows. Let me pause that. Um, actually, the speaker, and at first I didn't know what I was looking at, is this thing right here. And it's got this weird mesh on it, but uh, I'm guessing that's, again, for water prevention. You know, that makes sense. Oh, it's so, it's so heavy. This thing, I, you know, compared to, like, a regular laptop, it it's heavy. It is heavy. But, yeah, I will do some research into this thing. I'm going to get the uh, the ports on order. And we'll make some cool little videos with this thing. We'll we'll see if it still lives up to its name of being the Tough Book. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. And, uh, you know, I have a fun major project for you guys. Especially the Apple, the Apple guys in the community. Alright, take care. Again, as always, remember to like, leave a comment, subscribe if you want to watch more. Uh, you have a good night.